Hello, M-Town. Hello, everyone. My name's Peter. I'm responsible for driving dynamics integration at BMW M. Together with my colleagues, I make sure that the M vehicles drive the way you know them. Today I have the pleasant task of presenting the new M3 and M4 with MX Drive. That's what we call our interpretation of four-wheel drive. We're in our chassis workshop at Geiching and I've prepared two M4s for you. About 20 years ago I was in the Alps in winter. Back then I had an E46 M3 and then on a snow-covered pass I was overtaken by a blue metallic car with golden wheel rims. Yes, and I couldn't go any faster, even though I had the best winter tyres available. One thing was clear. Faced with a low friction coefficient, all-wheel drive has the advantage. But what about the additional weight, poor steering feedback and understeer of a permanent all-wheel drive in a high friction coefficient? Is it worth it? To avoid the problem with the understeer and poor steering feedback, the M3 and M4 don't have permanent all-wheel drive. Here we're dealing with a front axle drive that can be engaged as an addition to the standard drive. This occurs via a clutch integrated in the transfer case. This clutch transfers just as much torque to the front axle as is needed for ideal driving dynamics. The clutch is controlled by our new lateral dynamics manager. And yes, you heard right, we're talking about a lateral dynamics, not a longitudinal dynamics manager. This evaluates sensor signals 100 times a second. Lateral acceleration, engine torque, wheel slip, steering wheel angle, pedal angles and so on. And the lateral dynamics manager controls not only the all-wheel clutch, but also the rear axle slip differential. Thus, the front and rear axles work in harmony. So that this works equally well on dry surfaces and snow, the lateral dynamics manager has a friction coefficient evaluator. This uses the sensors to calculate the current friction coefficient between road surface and tyres. So, what did we do with it? From the outside, you can't really see anything, so let's jack the car up. Now we've prepared the M4 so that we can see all the drive components, and we've taken out one of my favourites, the Driving Dynamics Front Axle Thrust Plate. You see here a very large component, which is attached to the front axle subframe and supported on the outside by the rocker panels. This is a core component for the M3 and M4's excellent driving dynamics and precise steering behaviour. Here we see the transfer case. Further up, integrated in the transfer case is the multi-plate clutch. This connects the drive shaft to the front axle via a chain belt in the transfer case. The drive shaft goes into the front axle drive here. And here, from the front axle drive, come the output shafts. These are integrated in an M3 for the first time. Here you can see our complete brake unit with attached ECU. This is where the lateral dynamics manager is also integrated. For the M3 and M4, we further optimized the lateral dynamics manager. That's easy to imagine. If you want to drive such a highly dynamic vehicle like the M3 and M4 along the lateral dynamic slip limit, it's better to react quickly and have a good close look. So we spent a lot of time setting up the individual controls of the lateral dynamics manager. The lateral dynamics manager has different factors and maps for every driving condition. With these, we can create the driving behavior from the M3 that we want. In order to do so, we're on the road all over the world. That means from the Nordschleife right up to frozen lakes in northern Sweden. We looked extra hard at the CO2 emissions. We don't just want the best driving dynamics for the M cars. They should also be top performers in terms of economy and efficiency. 
That was the reason we added another control unit. This can be used to switch off the all-wheel drive. It enables us to stop the lubrication of the all-wheel clutch and thus minimize losses in the system and thus CO2 emissions as well. Now I'd like to show you how to operate the all-wheel drive in the vehicle. Some of you will already know our all-wheel modes from the M5 and M8. We've created three all-wheel modes in the M3 and M4. You can select the mode you want in DSC off. The first, four-wheel drive, with a high level of drive torque on the front axle, is optimized for lap times and traction with moderate attitude angles. The second, four-wheel drive sport, with reduced front axle torque, is optimized for high attitude angles in bends and small drifts. The third mode is two-wheel drive, with zero torque on the front axle. This is just for fun of the smaller donuts. In the two-wheel drive, as you can see, down here you can select M traction control. This offers slip control in 10 different steps. In DSC on, four-wheel drive mode is activated. In M dynamic mode, the four-wheel drive sport mode is activated. OK, that's it as far as the MX drive in the M3 and M4 is concerned. We think that the integration of the all-wheel drive in the vehicles is well worth it. And we're very happy about how we solve the interplay between driving dynamics and extra traction. With just 50 kilos of extra weight, for many the gain in driving dynamics and the extension of the range of operation prevails. But, in the end, you, the customers, decide. I must admit, we haven't made it easy. You have the choice, M3 and M4 with standard drive, or as here, with MX drive. I like them all. I'd have a hard time choosing. But one thing is certain. If I went skiing in the Alps, I'd take the MX drive. Drop us a line when you've driven an MX drive. We'd love to know what you think. So, with a hearty cheerio from Garching, drive safely and take care on the roads.